Hi, in this video, we're going to look at taking a web page and resizing it and scaling it for view on different size screens. So for example, we're going to take a, a sample page like this and modify the CSS so that as the screen gets smaller, you can see here that we have three columns and a green background under the header and as it gets to a certain point it's going to snap to two columns and we're just changing the background color of our header so that we can see that that style sheet is in fact being employed and then when we come back a little further we can go down to maybe something that would be displayed on a mobile device like a, a smartphone and as it gets to that point then our header changes to yellow and we're down to a single column. So this is what uh, this video is going to demonstrate how we can do what's called a media query and change the viewport for what's being displayed on the screen to adjust depending on the width of uh, the media screen. Now there are a set of sample files that I've uploaded to the web and those are included in the description. So to start out with, I'm going to open up a text editor and I have some files already open. And I'm going to be using Text Wrangler in here. It makes it very easy for me to switch back and forth to look at the different files we'll be dealing with. But this is mediaqueries.html and I just want to review the setup. We, right now we have um, it linked to a wide CSS file for our style sheet. And so the wide CSS style sheet is set up uh, basically so that we have uh, a wrapper going around the whole body, setting it up for 80%, and uh, the header is green color. So this is what it looks like with that setup. So we have one column wide text, we have a green header. So let me switch back to the editor. Okay, and then just basically how the rest of this is set up in the heading one tag here in the header section, we have an image being displayed and then uh, an area of content and footer section, which really aren't going to be used in this example, but you'll be able to see we're going to change the content in here to be three columns or two columns or one column, depending on the width of our screen. So the first thing we're going to look at in here is um, a technique to resize an image. And so in our style tag, uh, we're going to set uh, the image so that the maximum width of it is 100%, and we we'll have an auto height and a width of auto and a slash 9 for compatibility for Internet Explorer 8. So if I save this and go back to my browser and refresh it, Now what should happen is when I scale this down, you'll see that the logo is going to shrink, whereas without that, it would just get cut off. So as it comes down, the header's staying green, but um, you can see that the image is sizing. Now it's not always the best image. We'll do another example in another video where we can swap out a different image depending on the width of the browser screen. But right away you can see an advantage of setting that, especially if you had another image in here that you wanted to keep in there depending on the size of the screen. Okay, next we're going to add a meta tag and we have name equals viewport and content equals width device width. 
Now a viewport is something that users view a web page through and it's typically the browser window. Uh, they don't have to, the browser window doesn't always have to match the width of an actual screen so you know that you can make your browser window smaller or larger than the entire size of the screen like we're doing here. If that's the entire size of my screen, the viewport here is actually changing because I'm changing the width of my browser screen. So that's referring to the viewport. So in the code, we have a meta tag for viewport, and we're saying that the content in the viewport width is going to be equal to whatever the device width is. So when we get to smaller devices like an iPad or a smartphone, uh, this will adjust the width of the screen to fit in the width of the device. Okay, next. A media query is where we can actually include content in our specifying the style sheet to say only apply this style sheet if the screen width or the device width is within a certain range. So in this example we're using a link tag to go to the external style sheet y.css just like this does. This is the way we typically would do an external style sheet. But you can see now the difference is we have media equals only screen and min width 801 pixels. So what this means is that this wide.css is only going to apply when the minimum width of the screen is 801 pixels. Other than that, it won't apply this style sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this link tag up here just so that we can be clear that this will be the only style sheet that will be applied. So when I save my file and I go back and I refresh it in my browser, now as I take my screen and I make it smaller, we should see the green background disappear as it gets to be less than 801 pixels. And there you have it. So you can see the point of where we're at 801 pixels and making it smaller and now the background and any style information that would have been in that wide CSS goes away. So let me bring this back out and we'll try adding something else to our style sheet so that we can see it change. So again, this is the style sheet that's being applied. So I want to edit my wide style sheet and I'm going to come into the content and I already have some code to save a little time, but I'll explain what's going on with it. Um, we're going to set up the content so that it's going to be three columns wide and you can see the adjustments that are in here for Firefox, <coughs> excuse me, Safari and Chrome. So we're setting the content section up to be three columns wide and we're also setting it up so that there's a column gap in there for spacing purposes. So if I save my wide CSS file and we switch back to the browser and refresh it, now you can see we have three columns wide here. But then again, as soon as it gets to be less than 801 pixels, it's not going to recognize using that, st that wide CSS style sheet. So when we do that, our heading background disappears and we jump back to a single column layout in our content section. So we'll build on some more. Let's say uh, this would be effective maybe for a regular computer screen and now we want to build a version that would be that would accommodate 
something like a tablet device or an iPad. So we'll go back into the code and I'm going to go back into my HTML file and now we want to build one that is going to be for the medium. So for our medium, which might be again for a tablet device, we'll have a style sheet for medium, CSS, and again we're going to target the only screen and now we have two values. So here we have a minimum width of 481 pixels and a maximum width of 800. So this is going to be the next size down. We had 801 pixels or larger in the wide CSS and this is going to be anything between 481 and 800 pixels. So we have a medium CSS file. So let's look at medium CSS. I'm going to save my HTML file first. Go to the medium CSS. And let's give it a background color of aqua. And we'll set it up to put in to put in the uh, style, we'll do this two columns wide. So just like in the three column wide, the only difference is now we're using two columns and still putting some spacing in here. So I'm going to save my style sheet and I'm going to come back to my page and refresh. So this still should be picking up the wide CSS, but as soon as I start to make it less than 800 pixels, then the header should change. And now we have, it went from three columns to two columns. And then finally, we can set this up so that if it's being viewed on a smartphone type of device, then we can have a, a small style sheet applied. Okay, so this works like the medium and we're saying what the smallest width is for our screen and what the maximum width size is. So this is just one pixel less than the minimum width for our medium. So if I save that and we'll go to the small CSS and let's give it a background of yellow. And just to be safe, we'll change it back to one column, even though it should automatically, but we'll specify it. Just to be on the safe side in case something doesn't read right, we don't want it to try to be putting anything into two or three columns on such a small screen. So we'll save that. So we should see the background color change to yellow. So back here and refresh and our image is going to scale. The background should change to aqua. And then as it gets even smaller, change to yellow and move it into a single column. So there you have an example of using viewport along with media queries to adjust so that we can have for wide screens, medium screens, and then smaller width screens. I hope you found this helpful.